Today, I'm getting real about the software engineering job market in 2025. We've seen some major shifts in our industry over the past few years, and I want to break down what's actually happening here. I'll focus on three key areas that are reshaping our industry, and that's AI, outsourcing, and the broader economy. Now stick around until the end because despite some of these challenges, I'll share why I'm still optimistic about the future for those of you that are willing to adapt. And by the way, if you are struggling in this current market, then I might have something that interests you. I recently relaunched my dev launch program, but we'll talk more about that later. Anyways, before we dive into the specifics, let's look at where we currently stand. According to recent data, software engineering job postings hit a five-year low in early 2025, with listings down to about half of what they were during the 2022 peak. Now, the days of tech companies desperately competing for any developer they can find are clearly behind us, but here's what's interesting. The Bureau of Labor Statistics still projects 17% growth for software developers from 2023 until 2033. This is much faster than the average for all of the other occupations, and that means the market isn't dying, it's just transforming. Now, I've personally witnessed this transformation firsthand while training junior developers. The landscape has fundamentally changed, and we need to understand why. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room here, AI. Tools like GitHub Copilot and advanced LLMs are already handling significant portions of routine coding tasks. According to recent studies, AI tools have boosted engineering productivity by up to 30% at companies like Salesforce. This has directly impacted their hiring needs. Now, what I'm seeing is a clear shift in who is getting hired. The demand for AI research scientists, machine learning engineers, etc., that has completely boomed. Job openings grew 80% for AI scientists and 70% for machine learning engineers since 2023. Meanwhile, demand for mobile engineers, front-end developers, and data engineers dropped by more than 20% in that same period. Now, here's where I want to get brutally honest, and this is something that I've witnessed personally while training developers. Most new programmers aren't actually learning how to code anymore. They're learning how to prompt AI models. They rely on tools like Copilot and Claude to generate code without understanding the fundamentals of what makes that code work. When I sit with junior developers now, I notice that they struggle with basic problem solving and algorithmic thinking, and that's because they've outsourced all of that mental work to the AI models. Many can't debug or optimize the code that they didn't write themselves. They can get a feature working, sure, but they don't understand the underlying systems or what makes that feature work. This actually creates a massive opportunity for those of you who are still mastering the fundamentals. If you're someone who truly understands data structures, algorithms, system design, and computer science principles, you're becoming increasingly rare, and in my opinion, more valuable. The bar for senior engineers is actually rising, not falling. Now, this is exactly why I'm relaunching my DevLaunch mentorship program. In this program, I work with you one-on-one -on -one to identify your specific strengths and weaknesses and then create a tailored four-month plan to transform you into a confident, job-ready software engineer. I already ran this program a few months ago just as a test with a small group of developers and the results speak for themselves and people were getting a ton of value. Now, let me tell you about Yusuf, a self-taught developer. He was laid off from his job last September, really struggling to get interviews like many of us are, and after just two months with us at DevLaunch, he built a solid portfolio, got a ton of interview experience, and secured a brand new developer role even in this tough market. Now here's the thing, most developers already have the coding skills that they need. What's missing is the strategy, presentation, and confidence to stand out in this competitive market. If this sounds interesting to you, then just click the link in the description and you can watch a short video explaining the program, and I look forward to seeing you there. Anyways, let's move on to the next major factor that's reshaping our industry, and that's outsourcing. Companies have realized that not all great developers need to come from the United States. The global IT outsourcing market reached $617 billion in 2024, and it's projected to exceed $800 billion by 2029. Around 64% of IT leaders globally now outsource their software development, which is a huge shift from just a few years ago. 
Furthermore, remote work has completely changed how companies think about hiring, and if your team is already distributed across time zones, why not include developers from Latin America, Eastern Europe, or Asia who might bring specialized skills at a lower cost? Now, I've consulted with all kinds of startups, I've ran my own teams, and what I can tell you is that more and more people are hiring developers from countries like Vietnam, Poland, Argentina, and this model is becoming the norm rather than the exception, and it's what I've been using personally as well when I need to get development work done. But again, this creates opportunity for those of us with the right skills. The developers who succeed in this environment are the ones who can communicate clearly, understand business context, and manage complexity across distributed teams. Technical skills alone are not enough anymore, and you need to be an effective collaborator who can add value beyond what can be easily outsourced. This is the number one thing that I see missing when I do hire outsourced developers, that communication, that professionalism, and kind of the work culture that you do typically get in a place like the United States. If you can really level up your communication skills, you're going to stand out, and it's going to be worth hiring you rather than bringing someone from maybe a more developing nation. Now, the third major influence that's no surprise is the broader economy. The end of 0% interest rates since 2022 has dramatically changed tech funding. VC investments have declined, startups are more focused on profitability than growth, and established companies are under pressure to demonstrate operational efficiency. Look, according to the Pragmatic Engineers analysis, software engineer jobs saw the biggest boom and bust in vacancies compared to other sectors. No other segment saw hiring more than double in 2022, and none has fallen faster in the last two or three years. What goes up fast also comes down fast. Now, what we're seeing right now is really just a market correction after years of completely unsustainable growth. Companies overhired during the pandemic when money was cheap, and now they're right-sizing their engineering teams, especially as AI tools make each engineer more productive. But this isn't all bad news. The fundamentals driving tech demand still remain strong. Digital transformation continues across all industries, cloud adoption is accelerating, and cybersecurity needs are growing. Companies still need engineers. They're just being more selective about who they hire and what skills they're prioritizing. You can no longer just get by by knowing a little bit of JavaScript. You have to have real skills and be able to provide real value to these companies. Now, despite these challenges, I still remain incredibly optimistic about the future of software engineering. Believe me or not, here's why. Now, the number of truly skilled developers is not increasing. In fact, it's decreasing, and I think quite quickly. Most developers now aren't actually learning the craft of software engineering deeply. They're learning to be AI operators. This creates a massive opportunity for those of us that are actually willing to master the fundamentals and to put in the work. I see this every day in my training. The gap between mediocre developers and exceptional ones is widening drastically. Companies may hire few engineers overall, but they'll pay a premium for those who can architect systems, optimize performance, and ensure security, as well as solve complex problems that AI struggles with. Now look, take my friend David here, okay? He vibe coded his own startup in just a few months, and guess what he's in desperate need of now? a six-figure, experienced developer that can take over and clean up the mess. We're going to see more and more of these examples. Sure, we can get something out quickly, but when something starts to become a legitimate business, you need someone with real experience to jump in here, take over, and architect the product like it should have been from the very beginning. The fact is that the skills that make someone a senior level software engineer, like systems thinking, architectural design, performance optimization, security mindset, these are actually becoming more valuable, not less. I've watched junior developers who rely too heavily on AI struggle when they're faced with complex problems that require real deep understanding, or I've watched their systems fall apart as soon as they cross that 10,000 lines of code mark where things start to get really complicated. If you're someone who can truly code, who understands memory management, concurrency, database optimization, and system design, you're becoming more rare and more valuable. Now, the market may be tougher for entry-level positions, for sure, I don't disagree with that, but exceptional engineers still have multiple offers and are commanding extremely high salaries. When everyone is ditching the fundamentals for that short-term gain, those that stick with it and develop true engineering skills are going to be rewarded in the future, at least that's my opinion. Now, what's my advice overall here? Embrace AI as a tool, not as a replacement for learning. 
Use it to handle routine tasks while you focus on developing deeper expertise. Invest in your communication skills and your business understanding that complement your technical knowledge. Build systems, not just features, and understand the why behind design decisions, not just the how of implementation. In my opinion, the future belongs to those who combine deep technical expertise with the ability to solve real business problems. That's always been true, but I think it's more true now than ever, and I truly believe that those that take this field seriously are going to be highly compensated in the next few years. I personally don't know a single talented software engineer that's struggling in today's market. In fact, the ones that I do know are getting richer than ever. So there you have it. That is my honest assessment of the software engineering job market in 2025. Yes, AI is transforming our work. Yes, outsourcing is changing the hiring patterns. And of course, economic factors have cooled the job market compared to the frenzied peak that we saw in 2022. But for those of you that focus on mastering the fundamentals, who use AI as a tool rather than a crutch, and who developed both technical expertise and communication skills, I still believe that the opportunities here are excellent. The demand for exceptional software engineers is not decreasing, it's actually increasing as truly skilled developers become more and more scarce. If you're committed to continuous learning and mastering both the art and science of software engineering, I think you're going to thrive regardless of the market conditions, and that's been my experience. Now look, I might be wrong. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic down below, so please drop a comment and let me know about your experience in this current job market. If you found this helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, and you can check out that DevLaunch mentorship program if you think this is something that could help you out. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you in another one.